before the nuclei greet each other, male nucleus and the female nucleus as they are called, uh, this will double its genetic material. It's so beautiful. I will teach you in genet uh, lectures of molecular biology that its gen uh, DNA start uncoiling and enzymes jump in. Oh, from this DNA, they will make on DNA. On one chromosome, maybe 3,000 genes. So exactly 3,000 genes are copied here. In the same way, this also copies itself. Now tell me, how many maternal chromosomes are present here? And how many paternal chromosomes are present here? Don't tell me two. Chromosomes are not counted by their DNA number. Chromosomes are counted by the centromeres. This is still one chromosome with double DNA. And this is also one chromosome with double DNA. Is that right? So they, these will become 23 chromosomes with double genetic material. So 23 chromosome, which when it came, it was 23 with one N number. Now it become 23 with two N. And this become 23 with two N. Yes, what is your question? If it has to copy it, then why does it bother doing the polar body thing if it needs it anyway? Oh my God, she's asking that if it was, it was supposed to do the copy, why it bother with the polar body thing? Actually, this is a basic principle that before the mitotic division, this is the basic thing we learn in mitosis, that before the mitosis, genetic material has to be doubled. Our molecular machinery, enzymes are pre-programmed for this thing. And if it was not bringing the polar body out, from two it will make four. Right? So this is a purpose in nature. Am I really clear to everyone? So, this is, now there are 23 chromosomes with double copy of genetic material, double 23 chromosomes with double copy. Now they are ready for the next generation. Maternal chromosome and paternal chromosome. What they will do? As this process, when they are making their, what is this? When they are making their genetic material double, this process is called growth of the nuclei. So when this is called male pronucleus and this is called female, female pronucleus. So we say that in the fertilized ovum, male pronucleus and female pronucleus go under the growth and maturation. What they are doing then, they are doubling their genetic material. And after that what happens? They will come together to each other. And, and you know, the whole purpose of all this thing was to mix the Combine the maternal genetic material with paternal genetic material and make a new person in the world with a unique combination. Now, when they move to each other, here are the paternal chromosome, here are the maternal chromosome, only barriers are these membranes. So as these two pronuclei, male and female pronuclei, meet with each other, they immediately No, they, they touch and run away, they are uh, what the rubber balls? No. No, no, no. Again, remember important things in life. Both of them will undress. Both of their envelopes will dissolve, melt away. And these chromosomes will become happily out. But first they have to touch each other. You know, magic touch means a lot in biological world. As soon as they touch each other, these 23 chromosomes and these 23 chromosomes, they are too desperate to meet each other, to make a new human being. So their membranes dissolve. But this is 23 with double copy. I mean, it is like this and like this. And this is 23 also with double copy. But I'm just showing, suppose, chromosome of one maternal and this is chromosome of one paternal. Is that right? Now, this is the intermingling of maternal and paternal chromosome, which was a part of the fertilization process. For fertilization process is continuing still. Is that right? So both membranes disappear, chromosomes, maternal and paternal intermingle with each other and after having initial greetings, they decide to depart to make two cells. So what will happen? Spindle will be formed in, what will be made? What will be made? Spindle will be, metaphase will come and on the spindle, maternal and paternal chromosomes will be decorated first. For example, this was which one? Paternal chromosome number one and what is this? Maternal chromosome number one. Now what will happen? This chromosome 
will long, longitudinally break at its centromere and one copy will move to this end, other copy will move to the other end and in the same way maternal one copy will go to one end, other copy will go to the other end and deep furrow will develop on this side, cell is trying to go into cleavage. So soon you will find that one copy of chromosome 1 from mother come here, one copy of chromosome 1 from maternal side come here, one copy of what is this? Paternal come here. And when this deep furrow will go, how many chromosome number 1 this cell has? One paternal and one maternal. 23 paternal, 23 maternal, 46. Am I really clear? And 46 in other cells also. Right? No problem up to this? One thing, initially this chromosome was doublet. Suppose this was doublet, then it will split here, then this will move on this side, this will move on this side. When they are moving, what are they called? One chromosome or two chromosomes? Then they are called chromatids. Have you heard of the term chromatids? Right? Now this is the movement of the chromatids and when they reach up to the end and again they dress up themselves, new nuclear membranes start, then they are called chromosomes. And then every time they will double themselves again divide, double themselves again divide, millions of the cells will be made, but every cell will have the same genetic material as the fertilized ovum had initially. Is that clear? No problem up to this? Now again just to sum up, what are the main results of fertilization? What are the main results of fertilization? Number one, establishment of diploid number because chromosome had, sorry, sperm had haploid number, 23 chromosome and ovum, ovum eventually has 23 chromosome. But after fertilization, male and female pronuclear form, then eventually they fuse, genetic material intermingles and cell from haploid has become diploid. Is that right? So establishment of diploid number of chromosome. Number two, determination of establishment of chromosomal sex of the new individual. Because, you know, all the ova have X chromosome, but half of the sperm have X chromosome and half of the sperm have Y chromosome. So actually, at so early stage, at chromosomal level, sex has been determined. If ovum brought the X chromosome, the maternal X plus paternal X make a female baby, female fetus. But if sperm has brought Y chromosome and ovum was having X, then what happens? X and Y, male, baby. Is that right? So, another result of the fertilization is that at that very moment, the moment fertilization has been done, right, chromosomal sex of the product of conception is established. Genitalia will develop, of course, later, right? Third is, third main result of fertilization is metabolic activation of the ovum and initiation of cleavage. So that one cell go into two cell, because if sperm is not there, do you think ovum alone will go into two cell stage? No, right? So third result of fertilization is initiation of cleavage. Is that right? Any question up to this? So here we complete our lecture of fertilization. Next lecture we'll talk about how this unicellular embryo, right? Fertilized ovum or zygote, right? How zygote convert into two cell stage and four cell stage and then marula and then blastocyst and so and so forth. That will be discussed in coming lectures. Class dismissed.